Analysis is a solar photovoltaic simulation software with detailed analysis capabilities, recognized worldwide for its comprehensive approach to modeling various types of PV installations. In this tutorial, we will walk through the basics of the software and we will show you how to design and simulate your first grid-connected project. At the first main page, you have an overview of the different main components in the software, such as the project design and simulation, utilities, documentation, as well as your recent projects and your workspace. Project design and simulation is the main part of the software and is used for the complete study of a project. It involves the choice of meteorological data, system design, shading studies, losses determination and economic evaluation. The simulation is performed over a full year in hourly steps and provides a complete report and many detailed results. In Utilities, you find for instance the databases, where you can find all the sites and components already stored in PVSYST. You can also generate new sites, import weather data and create new components. In the Documentation section, you find a direct access to the different PVSYST help tools and tutorials. All your projects and components will be saved in your workspace. In the workspace, you also find a set of templates with the correct configuration to be used, for instance, to define a self-consumption profile. You can export and import the entire workspace for shared projects. From the main page, you can also import and export projects and components. It is also from the main page where you can set the language and where you find the settings for the advanced parameters that generates the majority of the error messages. For this first explanatory tutorial, we choose a grid-connected system, but the majority of the steps and information will be relevant also for standalone and pumping systems. The workflow in PVSYST is to work in projects and in variants. This also illustrates a hierarchy of the software. Projects contains the geographical site of your system, they reference to a file with the meteorological data and some general parameters like the albedo definition and parameters specific to this project. The system variant contains all the detailed definitions of your system, which will result in a simulation calculation. In the project settings, you can define overall parameters and preferences for the project. Note the difference between the project settings here that will affect only this specific project and the advanced parameters in the main page that will be implemented in all the projects in your workspace. In the project, you must first define the project's name, choose your site, and define a weather data file. The site file contains the coordinates of your project that is used to calculate the sun's position each hour of the calendar year. There are two ways to define a project site. You can either choose a site from the list or create a new site by typing the name or using the interactive map. When creating a geographical site, you can directly import weather data from a list of weather data providers such as MeteoNorm, PVGIS, SolCast, SolarAnywhere and SolarGIS. The import is automatic based on the coordinates of your site. It is up to you as a user to evaluate which weather source provider that is the most accurate for your project. For certain providers, you need an additional license to have access. MeteoNorm data is included with the PVCs license. The data imported are hourly values. The values are then averaged and displayed as monthly values. By clicking OK, you will be prompted to save the geographical site and the synthetic hourly weather data that have been generated, if your weather source is based on synthetic data. By clicking Open, a summary of the weather data is available. Note that PVCs is labeling a generic year as 1990. Let us now move on to the first system variant. To define the orientation, you must choose the field type. You may define multiple field types by clicking Add Orientation at the top of the dialog. To define an orientation, choose the field type in the drop-down list. All the different field types have in common that you must define the plane tilt and azimuth. In general, the plane tilt is defined as the angle between the collector plane and the horizontal. The plane azimuth is the angle between the collector plane and the direction towards the equator. In this tutorial, we will define a simple fixed plane system. Note that, if tables are defining the 3D scene, the base of these tables may be inclined with respect to the horizontal. 
This is the base tilt angle, which is usually named base slope in the 3D scene. In the fixed plane definition, PVSYS displays a quick optimization tool, indicating the energy yield as a function of the tilt and the azimuth. This is a rough estimation meant for judging how your orientation choice, the violet point, will affect the yield with respect to the optimum. We can now move on to define our system. The system is defined as the set of components constituting the PV array. That is, the PV modules, inverters and the design of the array, here separated in different background colors. In this example, we choose a generic panel of 300 watt peak and an inverter of 9 kW and define 18 modules in series and two strings. The system is organized as a set of subarrays. From here you can manage the subarrays. You can add, copy, rename, move and delete. The inverter can be defined either as a full inverter or by independent MPPT inputs. Defining independent MPPT requires that we carefully design that we have a multiple between the amount of strings and MPPT inputs. By using complete inverters, PVSYS will evenly distribute the power to all the MPPTs automatically. Thus, if all the strings have the same length, this is the most straightforward way. To help you with the array sizing, there is a tool that helps you to illustrate the character and the different limits of your system configuration. A first graph shows the voltage constraints, which will determine the number of modules in series. Here you have the PV array IV curves for winter conditions, high voltages, and summer condition, that is, low voltages. The graph shows the lower and higher voltage limit for the maximum power point tracking. The MPP value of the IV curve should lie between these limits. You see also the maximum open circuit voltage at low temperatures. This should never exceed the absolute maximum voltage allowed for the inverter. You can play with the number of modules in series in the system to see how this affects the maximum open circuit voltage. You see also the input current and power limitations if these are specified in this inverter. Don't worry about this too much, they are not really significant, as the inverter takes care of its own limitations during operation. We have now decided the number of strings in parallel, according to the array power required. For this, PVSYS chose the distribution of the effective power available at the output of the array during the whole year for your meteorological data and the plane orientation. Here we have the nominal power at the input of the inverter. The operating conditions above this value will be limited. The violet curve shows the limited power and the green curve shows the available power from the array if the array is working at its maximum power point. The difference between these curves represents the overload loss. The area between these curves with respect to the full histogram area is the overload power loss percentage. An important indicator is the nominal power or p-norm ratio. This is often called the DC-AC ratio. Note that the overload loss calculated by the simulation may be significantly different from the sizing value. This is because the calculation of the histogram for this rough sizing tool cannot take all the system losses into account. The reference result will of course be the result to the detailed hourly simulation. We can now click on Run Simulation button and the simulation runs immediately. This dialog shows a small summary of the simulation parameters and its results. All the information about the simulation parameters and results is gathered in the report. First, there is a cover page. The second page shows some high-level summaries of the project, system and results of the simulation variant. The third page shows all the general parameters of the simulation. The fourth page shows the main results. The graphs at the top show you the normalized production of the system and the performance ratio over the year. The normalized production shows collection and system losses as well as the useful energy produced per kilowatt peak of installed PV modules. This is paired with the graph of the performance ratio for each month of the simulation. A table showing the balances and the main results for each month as well as the whole year is also given. Page 5 represents a Sankey diagram of the energy fluxes to represent the losses in the PV system. This is a powerful indicator of the quality of your system and will immediately allow you to identify sizing errors, if any. Page 6 shows some special graphs on the simulation. You can further customize the report in the report options. 